Hello everybody, this is Bill Klingensmith of My Darn Studio in Rochester, New York, where I am recording some how-to videos for personal branding for the creative. Today I'm going to talk about how to create a new page um, in a... I, I use this theme, and a lot of themes have this. It could be under posts, but this particular theme is called Coastal. It's a child theme of the Genesis that I use that for portfolios, which I think is really good. And it, it's a, you have to pay for it. I think it's uh, $49, but at the same time, it's a really great theme, and it includes um, information that uh, or code that helps you with an uh, e-commerce store through Woo WooCommerce. That's why I like to use it overall. But today I'm going to talk about adding to the portfolio. So if I click on portfolio here, I can see all the pieces that are currently in the portfolio. Categories have uh, categories too that I've already added. So I've got a, a main category called jewelry, subcategories called belt buckles, bracelets, brooches, necklaces, pendants, rings, and then there's a sculpture, you know, tableware. So these are all the categories and subcategories to help organize your, your site so you can actually, you know, create some navigation and some usability from it. But what I'd like to do is show you how to um, add a new image or add a new uh, piece to your portfolio. I'm going to go to Portfolio, Add New, and I'm going to call these uh, rings. And I think they are, how many are there? Well, let's call this rings in... Uh, textured. Uh, so this is really beautiful rings of Karina's and I am going to just give it this name. She has the name probably a special name for it. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. The second step that I do is I go to categories and I choose my main category and my subcategory that I want these things to belong in. And it's having a subcategory, this is just for future reference to add more drop-down menus um, just for rings or just for pendants or just for bracelets overall. So I got a title, I got a new title, categories. And now I'm going to click inside the edit, edit content area and go to my folder of images, which I have these three selected. Move them a little bit out of the way. And um, the other good thing to do, we haven't done this yet since I'm doing it as an example, is to make sure that your name and uh, category and uh, title of the piece are uh, separated by uh, underscores, just things to help uh, search engines index your images in the future. Um, it's it just, you know, one more thing to do, but at the same time, it's a healthy thing to do for future search engine optimization for your, uh, for your work. So I'm going to click, grab them, drag them over this, and WordPress, thank goodness, it allows you to just say, okay, drop images to upload. That's pretty straightforward, and so I'm going to let it happen. And when that happens, I am going to see them load in very quickly. Now, a little sidebar here is I have sized all my images before bringing them in. I use the standard size of 950 for vertical images, and I use the width of 1200 pixels for uh, horizontal images. That's a very good standard at 72 dpi for um, including into your uh, website. Just because it's just like it's not too big, it's not too small, they open up really nice size, and when the, and they, they load at a decent rate, a fast rate, faster rate. Um, then if you had a 35 megabyte image that was 35 400 pixels wide which is just outrageous and you don't need that much information so size your images down before you get to upload them in here now the other thing that you could do too is you can size your images to be square if you wanted all your images to be consistent throughout your entire site that's going to take a little bit of photoshop work but it's a it's a good way of keeping continuity and keeping this you know the same kind of uh you know, image size on that and again that would be uh, 1200 by or 900 by 950 by 950 would be a good uh, square image size even 1200 by 1200 would work too just a little bit bigger um, just so you could get the width on it because again you don't know who's going to open this up and where they're going to open it up are they opening it up on a phone are they opening it up on an ipad are they opening it up on a desktop window like we are right now so I'm going to just, for the title of the piece, I'm just going to call this, uh, let me see if I have it still locked in here. Uh, actually, no. Um, I'm going to have, uh, call it uh, her last name, Manjaracina, I believe she pronounces it. And then this is just the title. And this is going to be, um, I'm going to just call it Textured Ring. 
and then yeah that's the category jewelry now again I'm just shortcutting some of the names here but you know I'd put a lot of thought into what you want to call it because this is the uh, way of indexing and kind of like really kind of you know just detailing your work so if people are looking at it they're gonna see that what this is now the other thing that you could do too here is um, add captions to your work and I just did another previous video on how to um, caption your work and then hide the captions now this is great for using uh, and for people for yourself making it efficient a next step to help promote yourself using Pinterest or if someone else wants to pin your work so I like to add um, a couple hashtags and I'm just kind of just you know adding some things that I think of right now and I'm gonna add um, the uh, web address for Karina's actually HTTP colon slash slash www.karinas.com and then that's it so I'm gonna highlight it copy it and then go to each one of these and just reproduce the detail of that and just by by clicking the image coming over here to caption and pasting that's going to allow it to um, have the details of the title and the caption in there um, you could go through the alt text and description. I don't know if it's really totally important, but it works too. Um, a lot of times, um, I th these are hidden in the code, which might even be a better way of going about it, but I like to kind of put these in here. Now, next step. I want to put these three images in the page, but I want to have make sure that all of them appear um, in one group that has when I click on them I want them to open up in a light box now I use a light box plugin called uh, responsive light box it's a free plugin and um, I add it to 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 make this functionality happen so the next step I do is I make sure these are all in they're all titled and captioned and then I click create gallery and now because I'm creating a gallery I get to say which images I can click anything that's in my library to group together to become part of this particular gallery well I want just these three images to be part of it and I want to um, uh, you know those just the three so the next thing I do is go to the bottom right here and say create a new gallery so that's the step after from here I can then arrange these images to being the order that I want them to be now the goal is for them to open up into a new window so the first part that I would do on this uh, gallery settings list is change it to link to media file that means it's going to link to the JPEG that you are going to actually use to upload to or, or that's going to pop open when in a light box when you click on the link itself now, if I want, if I had a lot of images to put on the site, I can choose how many columns I want them to, to uh, appear in. Now, newer WordPress, this is great, um, allows you to choose the number of columns. There's a lot of CSS that backs that up to help organize that. But because there's just three images, I want them to only um, be one across. So it'd be just this image first, stacked on top of this image, stacked on top of this image. It's a very good way of doing it. Then I'm going to choose larger or the large image on here. Now it takes a, just a tiny bit more to load. This is the way that I'm doing it. Um, you know, you might you choose smaller, uh, the medium if you would want. Um, and you can control these images by size um, and how they appear um, with other plugins. So if you wanted to have other options for sizes, you can add that through plugins, or you can actually add a function to your functions file of your child theme. Those are for more advanced people that know a little bit more about programming. So this is how I grab. I go here, pick the three in the order, one column, size large, insert gallery. Now once I do that, it's in the edit page area. I can go back. And click on the image and go back and say oh I wanted this to be last update gallery so now if I look at my list here that's that image has changed now you can't go by how it looks right here you have to go by when it's published so before I go that far I want to make sure that um, 
I set the featured image before finishing up what I'm doing here. And I'm going to choose this nice detail right here as the featured image for the page. This is what's going to appear on the archive page, or if you actually insert this page into uh, Facebook, it's actually going to bring this particular image along as the first icon or the first graphic to represent the page. So again, uh, add media, make a gallery, insert it into here, add a featured image, be sure your categories are chosen, be sure you have a title of your page. Because the title of the page is what's going to create this thing, which is your uh, permalink, which is, you know, that uh, is referred to as your, you know, address of the page. And I hit publish. Oh, man. What happened? So now that I've chosen to uh, add, uh, uh, publish this, it changes publish to update. Then the next thing I do is I just check preview. And I'm going to right click on it because this is the way I like to do it to open up in a new window to be sure that uh, I don't lose that particular window. So there's the title of the page that was in here. Title, texture, rings textured. Uh, the images. Uh, and you'll see now that when I roll over it, it has the Pinterest icon. That is because of uh, my Pinterest uh, uh, add on for this. And then there's my third image. So that's the three images in, in the row that I changed it. Remember, I swapped them around. I went back in, edited. So when I click on it now, it opens in a light box. Right? So then I can choose this and start clicking through the light box and say, all right, man, that's great. There's a close-up of the image. Now, if I start changing the size of this, this light box is set to be responsive. So it makes it more responsive for a phone, for an iPad, and for a desktop window. And then when I'm done, I just click off of it. So that's how those appear from publishing it overall. Now, remember, I've made the featured image. On the page for this theme, it brings in the featured image in this manner right here. So there you go. So those are how you add um, a gallery of images to um, your portfolio section of this particular theme or any page or post that you would make in WordPress. All right, thank you so much for your time. I hope you learned something. And if anything, spin this thing back around and play with it uh, to uh, follow the process of how you actually can publish images in your gallery. All right, be well. This is Bill Klingensmith of My Darndest. Have a good day.